Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, make us worthy to end your house with diligence. Do not get your door with confidence, and to worship you in your sanctuary with sincerity. Answer us with kindness and respond to our petition from the treasury of your mercy. Then we shall glorify you with joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Oh, oh, oh. 
to your holy scriptures, to be glory forever. Amen. We with great honor Joseph took our body, body from the cross. By his, his action he made known, favor passed from Israel. Israel. Hosts of angels stand in awe, and in fear behold the sight. With great honor Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. Angels sang our Savior's praise as they stood around the tomb. People of the earth proclaimed, The Lord has saved us by our death. The reading today is proclaimed without introduction or conclusion. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness which are with no one will ever see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it may become defiled. See to it that no one becomes like Esau, an immoral and godless person who sold his birthright for a single meal. You know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, even though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not come to something that can be touched, like a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose word made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. Since it was on the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. In the letter to the Hebrews, the writer made sure that we understood that things can lead us away from the Lord. And he used the example of the bitterness, that we can harbor bitterness. And with Jesus being the Prince of Peace, really what that involves in so many ways is takes away the peace within our own heart. But we also can see it externally. 
many wars, misunderstandings, uh, try and prove who's the toughest, why to appear the toughest, means that we have to harbor and even sometimes exaggerate the hurts and the pain and the injustices. But certainly there is genuinely severe and horrible injustices in the world that brings death, that means sorrow, that means a great deal amount of suffering. And at most times in the history, there's somewhere someplace. And then with today's ability to put it on the news, we are continuously, hour by hour, saturated with some group that hates someone. And that we can become absorbed in this. And it's very hard not to, to view the whole world as being absorbed in hatred, and anger, and bitterness, and revenge, and pride, and greed. The list goes on and on. And the scriptures try to redirect all of this. It doesn't pretend it's not as severe as it is, or less painful than what it is. We have our own little wars that go on inside of us, struggling and trying to move forward. And this again is being addressed. This particular day, we do focus on the death of Jesus. But it also, in this particular ceremony, it redirects that yes, we are very consciously uh, aware of the crucifixion. Uh, we have Jesus' uh, body on the cross that we gaze upon. And it's interesting, in the early church, they didn't very often have crosses with Jesus on it because they only wanted to view the victory and they wanted a person to be able to see beyond him being on the cross. And in this case, that's why the oldest liturgical practice that's available, the name of Shrar, or Adai Mari, goes by different names, the focus is on the chalice. And the symbolism that the chalice did catch the blood. That it wasn't just drained away and it isn't just gone. But that's not the visualization that we are supposed to be left with. Even though it certainly is there. When we celebrate the sacrifice of the liturgy, the Corbono, it's to remind us that as Christians, we are to image the living Christ. His living power and his living intimate relationship with us. That's why during the season 11 we have picked those particular uh, liturgies with their titles because somewhere in there we connect at a very powerful level that he is with us, walking with us, trying to reach out to us. And one of the interesting things about Lent, when we fast and we pray more, sometimes we become much more sensitive spiritually, more sensitive to the presence of God, but sometimes it's more sensitive to the struggles and burdens that we carry in life. They're always kind of mixed together. And that symbol is also found in the liturgy when we mix the wine with the water, the humanity and the divinity with uh, the strength to heal, but the healing is needed for our wounds. And so when we look at this, it is a time to look at our own personal wounds and what needs healing. Yesterday was washing the feet and using the symbol of what are we allowing God to wash away in our life. And with our feet, where are we willing to walk in order to receive and know Him more deeply? And today, the focus is on the chalice. In what way do we approach it? Also, in what way does He approach us? Because it is where the heaven meets earth. It's where our earthly items, our wine and our water, our hearts, our minds, our will, our soul, our spirit. There's a mixture and mixing with something we're living and he's living. And you have the prayers that you're very fond of. You have united O Lord, your divinity with our humanity. This exchange is going by. But this is the day that's most clearly visual and prayerfully the bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and you'll notice that the prayers do really represent the Old Testament blended into the New. 
in the crucifixion into the chalice. And as a reminder that Jesus has not died over and over and over again when we say the liturgy or the Mass or the Carbono, whichever phrase we use. It is the same thing, but it's given to us in a different manner. In this way, we can receive Him knowing Him as a living being and knowing how powerful that is, and so much so in His actions, that when the priest gives communion, he does say, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and for eternal life. And as we soak ourselves in this, as our mind surrender to His plan of salvation, becomes more and more alive in us. We're not always very much, we might not be always aware of it every single time, but somewhere in there, you know, think about all the walking, the talking, the healing, the forgiving, and all the ways He has touched people throughout the centuries, and how He is touching us right now, right here. When we walk with the chalice, remember that Jesus had us in mind, and according to his will, and according to the plan, to restore us, to give us new life in him. I will go to the altar of God, the God of give joy to my youth. To the abundance of your goodness, I'll enter your house and worship in your holy temple. God, be your Lord in your fear and instruct me in your justice. Pray for me to the Lord. May God accept your offering and have mercy on us. Behold the, the holy chalice, God's life-giving blood, which is consecrated for all mortals by the apostles. Behold the chalice of salvation, God's living blood. Come forward, all peoples, and rejoice, for it is a, absolves those who partake of it. Behold the chalice, which satisfies the church and the children of God. Those who drink from it are delivered from the flames of Gehenna. Behold the chalice, which was prefigured by the chosen nation, but when Jesus came in person, other nations welcomed him with joy. The honorable priest Aaron prefigured this chalice when he sprinkled the blood of animals to signify the blood of the Lord. The prophet Moses prefigured this chalice by the Lamb's blood which he sprinkled in Egypt to deliver the children of Israel. On the, On the cross, beside the Christ, Christ was pierced and wounded. Blood and water flowed from him to pardon all sins. O faithful church, now draw near to him with open hands to receive these gifts. Blood and water witness to the truth of Jesus, that he is true God and man. This shall is blessed. Moses sprinkled blood and saved the firstborn children. When the angels saw the blood upon the doorposts, they were not harmed. By the blood that flowed from his pure side, Jesus saved his church. Now upon the altar, where his blood was given, as a pledge of life to come, this chalice blessed, Lord. Lord, be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, by your grace, make us worthy to clothe ourselves with the robe of righteousness, that we may serve your mysteries at the table of your heavenly kingdom with pure thoughts. May our consciences be clothed 
with holiness may we shine with beauty, and may our souls be crowned with faith, hope, and love. O Lord, may our prayer be acceptable to you. In your compassion, make the entry to your treasury of goodness. Obtain the abundance of your riches, the forgiveness of our sins, and the peace and security of your entire flock. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Heavenly beings without number worship your divinity. 
Beams of light and spirit praise you. Cherubim and seraphim bless and sanctify you. O Lord, by your grace, may this word that you say with them. Holy, 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 mighty Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. O Son of the Christ, blessed is he who has come, and will come in the name of the Lord. O Son of the Christ. Blessed are you, all fruit of the Holy Spirit, gathered from the blessed vine of Mary, pressed in the sterile city of Jerusalem, mixed in the chalice of salvation, and offered for the Holy Church. Those who pressed it were scattered and prevented from drinking it, but those who drink it rejoice and sing praises. O Most Holy One, allow us to approach these holy mysteries and accomplish this Eucharist of saving passion of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we remember his death, proclaim his resurrection, and complete his entire mystery of salvation with true thanksgiving for your living and holy name. is blessed and worthy of all praise, now and forever. Have mercy on us, Almighty God. Have mercy on us. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. O Lord God, remember Mary, and through her prayer and holy prayers, have mercy and compassion on us, and hear us. How awesome is this moment. Bishop, I 
Ignatius, Dionysus, Athanasius, Basil, Gregory, <coughs> Eustasis, John, and especially Cyril, the Tower of Truth, the Chosen of God, St. Mary, our Blessed Father, St. James and St. Ephraim, both pillars of our Holy Church, and for all those who kept the true faith and passed it on to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. We also remember all the faithful who have died in the true faith, who have dwelt with you, especially in Teresa. We implore Christ our Lord, who has called them to pardon their sins and faults, and to lead them and us to his heavenly kingdom, we proclaim three times. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy.
side, open on the cross by lamps, our thirst is satisfied. Behold, the church tells the priest to carry it about the altar for the pardon of her children. Behold, the holy chalice, from it we receive salvation. From it we drink and are made worthy of the pardon of our faults. Behold, today it is accomplished through the ministry of the true priests that all nations are saved. Behold the holy chalice. King David foretold it, stating, I will receive the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Behold, today it is completed on the table of life, that mortals are promised eternal life. You have united the Lord. Thank you. 
sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our plea be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. The of angels come to stand with us at the holy altar. They sing chorus and carry Christ the Lamb, sacrificed before us. O come, receive him, saving Lamb of God, who will grant forgiveness. Alleluia.
give you thanks, O living Lamb of God. You came down to earth from heaven, clothed yourself with the body of our humanity, and died for the life and salvation of all people. Prophets and kings yearned to see you, but were unable. Yet you let us weak sinners receive you in our human hands and be purified by you. We praise you for your awesome majesty and your goodness toward us. You are the burning fire, carried by our hands and the living ember, touched by our lips. Purify, O oh Lord, the mouths, lips, and hands, those who held your body. Sanctify the body, souls, and spirits of those who received your blood. Purify the hearts, thoughts, spirits, and all their senses. Mark them with the seal of your cross and place within them your hidden power. O oh Lord our God, to you be glory now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with the Spirit. May God bless, sanctify, forgive and protect the faithful who have participated in this divine service for the holy mysteries. May God forgive them, their brothers and sisters and their departed. May God save us from confusion and shame before him on the day of judgment forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh. 